Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out the range with an Armalite rifle, and this is an original Costa Mesa gun. It was built at their facilities. Uh, they were more or less a prototype shop. They weren't truly a big manufacturer, so oftentimes they would design rifles and then license those rifles out to other companies to manufacture them. The AR-18 that I'm holding here, and yes, I said AR-18. This is an assault rifle. This is not the semi-automatic only AR-180. The AR-18 was one of the last rifles that Eugene Stoner influenced. So after Fairchild Armalite successfully sold the rights to the direct gas impingement, which is really an internal piston system, uh, to the U.S. government and to Colt, they wanted to start looking at manufacturing a rifle that was easier to manufacture in third world countries or countries that couldn't afford the tooling to manufacture what was then a very complex weapon to manufacture that required a high level of technology, which would be the AR-15, M16, and AR-10. So the design crew with Eugene Stoner being part of that crew started to work on a number of different rifles. And they were looking at 308 caliber rifles. And a couple of rifles came after the M16, or some of them were even being worked on before the M16, AR-15. They had the AR-12, and then they had the AR-16. Now, Eugene Stoner had designed them with the direct gas and pest, uh, impingement system as well, but when they wanted to go and license the gun to other manufacturers, the AR-18, they couldn't really do it using the internal piston system or the direct gas impingement system because they had already licensed that to Colt and that would be an infringement on their deal. So they had to de redevelop the gas system into a short stroke gas piston design, which is ultimately what this rifle wound up using. Now, while this rifle was never adopted by any major military in the world, it was manufactured in Japan by Hawa. It was manufactured in, in Costa Mesa in small numbers, both as a semi-automatic and as a machine gun. And it was also licensed to Sterling in the UK to manufacture the firearms. Uh, the IRA in Northern Ireland wound up using quite a few of these AR-18s in their fight against the, uh, the British military. So anyway, this is a stamped sheet metal gun, and that's the simplicity of it. It was using a technology that was really, uh, really developed during the Second World War. The Allies were doing it, as were the um, Axis powers. The Germans made extensive use of stampings in weapons like the MG42 and the STG44, uh, the Brits with the Sterling, the United States with the Grease Gun M3. So stampings were quick, easy, and, and very palatable for a small third world country that couldn't manufacture a more complex weapon system, and it would be cheaper to manufacture using stamped sheet metal. So this gun is polymer and stamped sheet metal throughout. And we'll break it apart and show you what it looks like. Now, what's interesting is Armalite went out of business. They, they sold all their assets. The Armalite that exists today is not the same Armalite that built this rifle or that designed the AR-15 M16. Uh, it exists in name only there in Illinois. Um, so the, the company disappeared. These went out of production globally around 1985, I believe. And so these have become collector's pieces for sure. Brownells designed a variation of this gun. And we'll talk about what the Brownells upper receiver looks like and why it was designed the way that it is and how it's using the operating system that's very, very similar to the original AR-18 or AR-180. But first, let's go ahead and do a little shooting with this AR-18. Uh, on top of it has an old classic Action Arms red dot sight, and the dot is still working, believe it or not. And uh, we'll talk about how the mounting system works on the, the old AR-18s and 180s. They have a special magazine cut, which is just a slit on the right-hand side. So even though it looks like a standard M16 AR-15 magazine, it's different in that it uh, has a different locking notch cut into it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, insert the 20-round magazine into the gun, charge the rifle, fire a couple of shots in semi-auto, and then we'll do a few bursts. But this is a very pleasant little gun to shoot. All right, last round, the bolt locks to the rear. The gun does have a side folding stock, and it is 
rather cheap feeling as compared to an AR-15 M16 that would have been manufactured by Colt in the same era. In 1985, all production of the AR-180s and AR-18s ceased. And so there was a lull there for a while, and there was a collector's market for the semi-automatic AR-180s here in the United States. But there, the rifles were getting old and people wanted new ones. And the new Armalite that, again, had nothing to do with the original company, actually produced what is known as the AR-180B. And it's different from its predecessor, if you take a look at them here on the table, in that its predecessor has a stamped upper, a stamped lower, a folding stock that's made of a high density polymer. And the B has the stamped upper, has a completely different method of disassembly, uses a standard AR-15 type trigger, but the lower is all one piece of polymer versus a sheet metal stamping. This uses a standard AR-15 style magazine, as you can see from the magazine release right there. It looks like it's right off an AR-15 because it is. And, you know, it, they recreated the hand guards to look the same without the high sheen. The front gas block, uh, you know, or the front sight post looks the same. But this thing was designed and brought to market around 2002. So this was within the assault weapons ban period, which means it couldn't have a threaded muzzle, couldn't have a flash hider, couldn't have a bayonet lug, couldn't have a folding stock. These almost scratch the itch for those people wanting to shoot them. The only problem is, is if you shoot this rifle very much, it'll break. The polymer lower, where this front hinge pin is, is not steel reinforced and it's known to crack there. This rifle is out of my collection. It's never been fired. It's new in the box. I'm not going to fire it. Not because I don't want to destroy its collector's value. It's because I don't want to break it. It, um, it could break in 20 rounds or 2,000. You just never know. A company did spring up that uh, Nodak Spud, I believe, uh, made a machined aluminum lower that you can replace these with if you want to shoot the gun. But I'm a collector and I want to leave it at its original state. But So this was an attempt by Armalite to bring the AR-180 back to the U.S. market. It was a flop. Now, something else I want to talk to you about is this little triangular piece here on the top. This is actually the original optics mount idea. If we take a look at the AR-18 machine gun down here, you'll notice it has an old school Action Arms red dot sight on it. Right back here, you have a plunger. It's a spring-loaded plunger. And what happens is spring tension you put the sight on, push it back, and let it go forward, and it will lock into this V section. Now, there's companies out there that are making mounts for the old rifles, so you can put MROs on them, a Picatinny 1913 rail, making use of this original mounting system. So, this was a pretty darn close copy to the original, and had it not been developed in the ban era, and had they not used an all polymer lower, or at least reinforced that front pin, this would have been a viable option and probably would have been better received by the US market, but it was a flop and disappeared. That was 2002. Fast forward to 2019, and Brownells wanted to bring back the AR-180, but they changed a number of things. First of all, this is an AR-180 upper, on an AR-15 lower. This upper is not compatible with any of the original designs. What it does do, though, is it has the same operating mechanism as the other two rifles. It's a true AR-180 from here up. Now, you also have a modernized 1913 rail across the top with M-lock features. It has a, an original style muzzle device and again, you can pin it to any AR-15 lower. But we'll take this rifle apart and we'll take the original apart and show you how they differ, but how they're also quite similar and why if you're hankering for an AR-180, the BRN-180 from Brownells might scratch that itch for you.
Let's take a look at how the original field strips and take a look at the internal components, then compare them directly to the BRN-180. So we have the magazine out, out of the weapon. I can visually see that the chamber is clear. I'm gonna go ahead and let that bolt go forward. It does have a reciprocating charging handle. Right back here on the original, you have this little push button. And what you need to do is you have to pinch that little detent and push forward on this. So I'm gonna basically push that button in and push forward, and that will allow the action to hinge open. You can take out the dual guide rods and recoil springs, and this is a signature component of the AR-180 action and design. All right, you set those down, and now it hinges open just like an AR-15, which isn't surprising given the designers. All right, once you have this out, you can draw your bolt to the rear, and there's a takedown hole right here, which will allow you to pull your charging handle out. At that point, the bolt and carrier will drop right out of the gun. These recoil spring guide rods go forward and also hold your hand guard in place. So once you have the recoil spring and guide rods out, you can actually just lift off your top cover. That gives you access to your short stroke gas piston for maintenance. You can take it out very easily. I'm not going to do it to the gun. But you can see how the gas piston works on the gun now. Actually, it's, it's a three-part system. I'll take it apart for you, what the heck, right? So you pull this rearward, you take that part out, then this part comes out, and there's your recoil spring, recoil spring, your <laughs> return spring on your gas piston. To put it back together, you just set it into its hole, push down, take your little gas puck here, In, and your gas system's back together. So this really is the heart and soul of the AR-180 system. Let me take the recoil springs off here. But you can see how the bolt rides on those two rods where the recoil springs would be. And so these two rods guide that bolt and make it move very smoothly and e evenly rearward. So it's actually a pretty ingenious design, again, that was copied by other weapons designers. You'll also notice that it uses a AR-15, AR-10 style bolt, because this bolt, again, is, has been used by many different weapon systems over the years. Eugene Stoner's designs were genius. This, this locking system is extremely robust and tough, which is why it's been copied so many different times. So now we've seen what the inside of the original looks like. Let's go ahead and put it back together really quick. Let's take a look at that BRN upper. The BRN has a polymer port cover, has the same style charging handle. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pop my AR-15 lower off. And again, this is just a standard run of the mill AR-15 lower that we got from Copper Custom standard buffer tube and everything like that. The only difference is even, um, it, it, well, the difference is, is the pins, like I'd mentioned previously, will not allow this upper to be installed to an original lower. So that's a no-go because they have completely redesigned the end here. Why we, st why we still have that square shape, we have this little butt cap on here that allows it to align with the rear extension tube of the AR-15 and hold all those internals in place. So you can just kind of pull on this cap. I'm gonna make it go shooting off here again. Ah, there we go. See how that little cap pulls off? Now keep in mind, I have a buffer and spring in there, but it's not being used. I can take that out and reduce the weight of the rifle because just like its predecessor, it has those two operating rods, or guide rods, I should say, and recoil springs, all right? I'm gonna pull the bolt to the rear, to the takedown recess, take the charging handle out. It's a near perfect copy of the original, and out comes the bolt. And once again, it's a darn near perfect copy of the original AR-180. So, 
You have the same gas system inside there. It's a short stroke gas piston system. Uh, you're just not going to access it as easily as you would on the original by taking the top hand guard off, putting it back together. And you can take a look at it here, guys. You can see that it's very nicely made. This is uh, aluminum. And instead of being stamped, it's all machined. So it's a very robust build. You can see on the bottom there. All right, putting it back together. Drop that in there. Take your charging handle, has a little indexing pin on it. Line it up and just like the original, it's got a little bit of slop to it, which is a good thing. That's what makes it so reliable. Push that all the way forward. Take your recoil springs and guide rods and just kind of push that butt cap on it. Just kind of friction fits there. And now all you have to do, just want, be careful guys, when you pull that bolt to the rear with that cap on there, you can launch that cap and the, uh, the recoil springs and guide rod. All right, and then we're just gonna go ahead and pin the upper and lower back together like any other AR-15. And it works just fine after the function check. So you have the benefit of using standard AR-15 magazines, you have the ergonomics of a standard AR-15, but you have the short stroke gas piston system and bolt and carrier and recoil system of the AR-180, which gives those of you that like piston driven ARs a better alternative because while the AR-15 was never intended to be a piston driven gun, external piston driven gun, it's an internal piston, a lot of, I made a whole video about that. But um, yeah, if you're looking for an external piston driven AR-15, here you guys go. This is an alternative for you. And you have 1913 rails, so you can mount, mount, uh, mount modern optics. And you still have the ability to change the pistol grip and anything that goes along with the AR-15 on the lower receiver. All options now, including the M-lock feature of the handguard. This upper also differs from the original design in that it gives you additional functionality you wouldn't find in the original AR-18, AR-180, or the AR-180 Bravo. And that's First of all, you have a ping pong paddle functionality. You'll see how it's machined here on the upper aluminum receiver so that you can depress that ping pong paddle. Bonk! You don't have that functionality with the original design. I can pull the bolt to the rear, push down on the ping pong paddle, and lock it open. Definitely a nice touch. Also, you have this little rubber piece that's screwed to the side of the receiver. And I can only presume that's for those folks that want to put a side folding stock on it. Because keep in mind, you don't have to use this buffer extension tube. You don't, you could get a lower that has a pick rail on the rear of it and put any type of folding stock you want on it. And that will keep it from dinging up the receiver. Really think, it looks like the guys at Brownells tried to think of just about everything. You have the familiar AR-15 fire controls, you have the magazine release right where you'd want it, you're using standard AR-15 magazines, and you have the added ability of a ping pong paddle release on reloading. Now let's see if I can do my job and hit a target 250 yards away. Not too bad. So we're using uh, Federal American Eagle 223 ammunition out here today. And uh, we're having, I mean, 
this thing's run flawlessly for us. We've not had any problems whatsoever. The nice thing is, is it's a typical AR-180 and it doesn't require a whole lot of maintenance. I mean, it's a very robust design. I actually kind of like it. At first I thought it was goofy. When they announced the BRN-180, I was like, sweet, they're gonna bring back the entire rifle. Then it was just an upper. And I thought, Ugh, no. But you know what, guys? What it lacks in authenticity in terms of reproducing the original, it more than makes up for in shootability, the ergonomics of having a standard AR-15 lower and the additional functionality of having things so simple as a ping pong paddle for releasing the bolt. I mean, that really, really is nice. This is a fun rifle to shoot. It really is. Does it 80s hip fire? Well, we're gonna find out. Does it take Glock mags? No, guys, come on. It takes AR-15 magazines. Got to put it on fire first. <laughs> Pretty cool. Woo! We got her hot. <laughs> it's fun. So the balance of the BRN 180 is pretty good. It's a little heavy, uh, more so out front, I think, than just your standard AR-15, but it still balances very nicely. And the fact that you can use standard AR-15 magazines is a bonus. That is an exceptionally shootable rifle. We're shooting at an IPSC Challenge target downrange at 100 yards, and it balances really nice. The recoil impulse is just buttery smooth. It's just a really neat, different type of upper. If you like AR-15s and you like AR-180s, <laughs> this is the perfect mix. It's really, really good. Now, we've had this for a while. It's kind of funny. Um, Mr. Guns and Gear did a video when we held off on doing ours and we were playing around with the gun and then we came out here to film today and we were getting all set up <laughs> and we got notification that my friend Eric at Iraq Veteran 8888 released his BRN 180 video. These things have been on the market now for quite a few months and we were just trying to hold off until everybody else had already done their videos and then share our thoughts after we'd had some trigger time on the thing and it just so happens that the day we filmed this Eric released his video. So <laughs> it's not by design, guys. It's not some big marketing blitz. It just happens that way sometimes. If you guys are looking for something just a little bit different and you're a fan of the AR-180, well, the BRN-180 upper assembly for the AR-15 lower is gonna be something that'll probably appeal to you. It is a true AR-18 in the upper half. So you get that gas piston that a lot of people want and the bolt and the carrier, the charging handle, all that is straight out of the AR-180. So it's kind of neat. The fact that it pins to an AR-15 lower, you get those familiar ergonomics and you get a little added functionality you didn't have with the original AR-180. And that's, you know, with the ping pong paddle and being able to release that bolt or to manually lock it open without having to use an empty magazine. So it's something that kind of grew on me and I like it. It's $799, it's not inexpensive, but it's different for somebody that's wanting to do a rifle build that doesn't want to use direct gas impingement. I would consider this over any one of the drop-in gas piston conversion kits that people put on standard AR-15 uppers. I'd rather have an AR-180 because this is a battle-proven design. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, a great way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. We are supported by you, not by the firearms manufacturers. There's a link down below if you'd like to support us on our mission, not only to bring you content, but also to fight as diligently as we possibly can for our Second Amendment rights. And please swing by and check out coppercustom.com where you can find things like this American Defense Spec Red Dot site. And thank you for 12 years of support. And the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, you guys 
put us over a million subscribers. Thank you for an amazing Christmas gift. I hope you guys have a wonderful 2020, and we'll talk to you guys soon.